Hi everyone and welcome to Team 12's presentation of the final project. My name is Jessica and I worked with Krishna and Derek on plant phenotyping. The motivation behind this project is to obtain indirect indicators of plant growth. Some of the typical phenotypic characteristics used for this purpose are listed here. However, for this project, we'll be focusing on the leaf collar method, which is defined by Purdue University as counting the number of leaves with visible collars. So for this project, we'll only be concerned with identifying leaves and collars on corn plants. So the collar of a corn plant is defined as the light colored collar like band that is found at the base of a leaf blade where the leaf meets the stem. And as you can see the picture on the right hand side, there are four leaves with visible collars. So this corn plant will be identified as being a stage B4 corn plant. The task of this project is to automate the detection of leaves and collars in corn plant images so that researchers can more easily determine the V stage of the corn plant. So a little bit about the image data we were given. Each team in the plant phenotyping group was given access to approximately 40 images per person, and we had to go through an annotation process. So using MATLAB's image labeler toolbox, we labeled each of the images of the corn plants um, in terms of key points. So as you can see the picture on the right hand side, this is how we identified the leaves and the colors on each of the plants. So when all the labeling was finished, we had about 476 images of corn plants at different growth stages. And we had to convert these labeled annotations um, into a common cocoa format, which includes the image name, the object type, whether it was a leaf or a color, and its corresponding key points. And then we split our data into a 90% training, 10% for testing. So in selecting our final model, we did a comparison with a few models that perform the same tasks. And if you'd like, you can take some time to read here, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to explain all of them. Just know that we chose the final model um, to be a faster RCNN model because it takes all of the good points of the other three models and merges them together with an optimized algorithm that runs a lot faster. And we cut a lot of the computation time for training and on prediction. So what you need to know about the faster RCNN model is that it is a network that consists of two modules, a convolutional model, and here we chose ResNet 50 over the other option of a VGG, and it's merged with a region proposal network. And how this works is the region proposal network proposes the regions, and it guides the object detection module on where to look for the object features. And these two modules get unified during the training process when we alternate between fine-tuning the hyperparameters for object detection with fine-tuning the hyperparameters for the region proposals. Hello, I'm Derek Martin and I'm here to talk about the baseline metrics for our model. So initially we didn't change anything in our model and the results were we were only able to find collars or nothing at all in the images. So uh, we made the following modifications to see if they would improve our model. We tried adding Gaussian noise elimination, uh, adding a pink hue to the images, uh, adding a fixed spot size, uh, comparing different optimizers, and then changing the VBOX threshold. So for pre-processing, uh, we realized that all the annotations weren't the same size, so we found the max width and max height to try to make the boxes the same size so then we can train based on that. And we also noticed that the window, I mean, the leaf tips were in the top left or the corners of the windows, so we adjusted that so then the tips were in the center of the box. And, and that's what we used to perform our training. And then for our uh, testing, we introduced a pink hue to the test images because it produced better results. So here's the results for uh, a image from our first model. We started up the beatbox threshold uh, at 0.5, and we didn't use the fits window size nor pre-processing. And here's our second model. We lowered the beatbox threshold. Uh, use the fits window size and no image processing. 
and you can see that we we identified leaves and collars this time versus just collars in this first image. And uh, the bebop threshold is related to this number in the top right of the labels. It shows the probability of the label that it assigned or predicted. And here's the results from our final model. We had a bebop threshold of 0.25 again, uh, fits window size, and image processing, and introduced a pink hue. Hi, this is Krishna, and now I will talk about metrics and performance evaluation. So these are the four metrics that we are evaluating. IOU, key point detection for the angle measurements, dice coefficient, number of colors, and the number of leaves predicted accuracy. So I will use basically the area of overlap divided by the area of union. A good score is between 0.5 to 0.8. Greater than 0.8, it is a excellent model. Tangent of the angle of intersection. As you can see from the diagram, it measures the angle of intersection of the predicted line and the model line. The closer the value to zero, better the model. Dice coefficient is very similar to IOU. It is two times the area of overlap divided by the individual areas. Uh, accuracy is measured as individual counts divided by the, for the predictions versus the ground truth. And these are the values which we got for our model. Uh, notice how the average accuracy for color is greater than one. That is because uh, the number of colors predicted by the model is greater than the ground truth objects. Key takeaways, um, before pre-processing the model, uh, the model is only predicting some leaves and some colors and not even sometimes uh, any of those objects by introducing the pre-processing step the model is performing much better um, and also sometimes the boxes were larger and also they are not centered correctly by introducing the pre-processing step they are performing well um, and if we can add a few extra pre-processing steps to remove the uh, noisy terms like sometimes a person is we person wearing a coat is present in the image then the models will become much better and these are our references for making our model thank you